Hey, welcome back for another episode of Porn Brain Rewire with me, Dr. Trish Lee. This week we're talking about be the man. Quit porn and be the man that you always have wanted to be and that you deserve to be. So in this episode, this is what we're going to talk about. Number one, we're going to talk about what the man means for you. Then number two, I'm going to talk about the role porn has played in your life, which has nothing to do with being that man. And then of course, number three, I want to show you how you can start being that man immediately. So let's dig in. The man. So it's Father's Day. We're moving into Father's Day weekend. And, you know, this is a special weekend for fathers, sons, daughters, wives, for everybody to be able to celebrate the men in their life. So it's important for me to show up here in this podcast because I work with thousands of men that are fathers and are grandfathers. And they come to me distraught because their porn use doesn't fit into the equation of that self-concept that they want for themselves. So that's where we're starting today with the man, is your self-concept. So we all should have a strong and positive self-concept about ourselves that is built on self-worth and self-esteem. Now you'll notice I'm using the word self a lot. Self means that when it comes time comes time to validate yourself, you are able to do it yourself. And that is not the case for many people. Many people have to go externally for validation of their own existence, which actually that would be other concept or other worth or other esteem. So if that's something that's happening with you, I want to bring that external regulation that's happening from outside in the world inside, inside your own mind and heart and body so that you can become the man that you want to be. The man is the self-concept and you figure it out inside. You don't figure it out by what other people think about you. You figure it out inside. Who do you want to be? And are you showing up with behaviors that match up to the person you want to be? And likely if you're consuming porn, the answer is no. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. So of course, in this podcast, get out your journal, one that you love writing in, get out your black crystal Saborski pen and or a pen that you love to write with and start jotting some of these ideas down. Your self-concept is who you want to be. And I got the title of The Man because you know how I love tunes. I got it from the killer song, The Man. And if you uh, if you haven't heard that song, listen to it because it is going to jazz you up in the right direction as you start thinking about who you want to be and the self-concept of how you're going to create this idea internally. So I'm going to segue to porn in a second and how often you've watched porn and the concepts that porn is giving you. But before I do that, I want to tell you that you have to create this concept for yourself and you do it in your journal. And then you need to visit this concept every single day. And what I'll challenge you to do in the end is to visit it as often as, as you have visited porn in the past. Now let's segue to, por to porn, excuse me, and we can come back in a minute to, you know, the idea of self-concept and what that looks like. So let's segue to porn and what porn is doing for you and to you. So I want to be really clear. It is serving a purpose for you, but it is also changing you and it is doing things to you. So what is porn doing for you? We know from neuroscience and anecdotally from millions of men that the role that porn plays is usually for emotional regulation. It's self-soothing or self-stimulation or both simultaneously. So it's used to offset stress and uncomfortable feelings. It's also used to offset boredom. Sometimes it can just be used as part of celebrating regular feelings. The end of the day. It's the end of the day. I'm going to use porn to let the energy in my brain come down and to relax. So it's used as an emotional and self-regulation tool. 
Now, I already told you in the beginning of self-concept that what we are going to be doing into the future is not going externally to regulate yourself, but going internally to regulate yourself. And if you're going back to porn with any consistency, frequency, and especially with intensity, what you are doing is going back to porn for external self regulation. So it's that other regulation that I was talking about before. And we really need to shift that so it's internal and you're doing it by yourself for yourself instead of allowing porn to regulate you and change your brain and change your behaviors while it's doing that. So let's visit that for a minute. You're using porn for self-soothing, self-stimulation, probably a combo of the two of them. But what is porn doing to you? Now we know from neuroscience that when you found porn when you were young, it became a tool to make you feel good in what likely was a stressful or chaotic or isolating or any of the emotional adjective world for you. So you're young, you find this thing, it makes your brain feel good because it gives you a dopamine rush. And so it becomes a tool that you learn to go back to. And of course, you know, as you're growing up, sexuality is entering into your life anyways, and you don't know that porn is unhealthy sexuality, and you never figure out how to create healthy sexuality because you're putting those seeds and watering those seeds on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So going back, I know I'm jumping back and forth a little bit today, but going back to internally creating that self-concept of who you want to be and watering those seeds minute by minute, hour by hour, you've inadvertently done that with emotional regulation and sexuality by going back to porn, you've done it in an unhealthy way. So over time, every time you've consumed porn, what you've done is you've watered those seeds of addiction. You've watered those seeds of emotional dysregulation and then the need to regulate externally through sex and porn. You've accidentally watered the wrong seeds. So every time you've gone back, you're watering those seeds and you're reinforcing those neural pathways and you're creating the need to go back even more. But every time you water it, you're changing the neural pathways and the ways that they operate, which does change the way that your brain works and your brain controls your mind and your body. So what's the number one way that shows up? It's hypersexuality. Looking for sex, thinking about sex, everything in the world becomes sexual. And then of course, what you watch becomes the arousal template of what makes your brain feel good and gives you the most amount of dopamine. So I'm sorry to tell you, if the thing that you're watching includes violence, you are training your brain to enjoy violence in sexuality. And unfortunately for a lot of people, what happens is in terms of escalation behavior, they act those things out with partners. And especially if you've taught yourself to objectify women by enjoying the violence with many, 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 many women, your brain's been trained in that way. But this is not your self-concept. This is the seeds being watered over and over and you've lost touch of your self-concept because these are the seeds you've been watering instead of watering the seeds on the other side of the garden, the seeds of the man that you want to be. You've watered the emotional dysregulation and the unhealthy sex seeds on accident, inadvertently. But the beautiful thing about neuroplasticity is, guess what? When you stop watering those seeds and you move to the other side of the garden and start watering the self-concept seeds for the man that you wanna be, now that section in the garden will grow and the other section will die off. Neuroplasticity at its finest. Neuroplasticity can be your best friend if you're watering the self-concept, the man seeds, and it can be your worst enemy if you keep 
watering the seeds for unhealthy sexuality and unhealthy emotional regulation. So what that looks like is something difficult ha happens in your life and you might have gone to porn to soothe that feeling and now you don't. You don't turn on the hose and you don't water that section. Instead, you get out your journal and you look at, I wanna be the man that can handle the crap when it hits the fan and I can handle it with love, I can handle it with patience and I can approach and engage and stay in it until I move towards healthy resolution. Now we're watering the right seeds, the seeds of being the man that you want and you deserve to be. Self-concept comes from the self. You get to be the man that you want and deserve and it doesn't matter if anybody else likes it. It's not other concept. It's not what people think of you. It's self-concept. And I'm going to make another podcast on the three eyes of what that self-concept includes. And I was talking to someone, my daughter takes horseback riding lessons, and I was sitting in these rockers in front of the barn. It's really beautiful. And uh, this woman came up and she started to talk about things that, of course, fell right in my wheelhouse. She was talking about, she's taking a course on, you know, becoming the person that she wants to be and doing the things that she wants. And that's a framework that I exist in, be, do, have. If you be the person you want to be and you do the things that are in accordance with that person you want to be, then you get to have the life that you want. And that's what I'm talking about here. And what I accidentally said to her is that, you know, for me, I've learned in my journey that what that includes is staying in integrity, living an interdependent life, and being able to do my own thing and, you know, feel what I wanna be able to create for myself individually. So she's like, wow, you know, I need your number. And I'm like, okay, see you next time. Because if you've met me, I won't be giving my number out. Uh, yep, interdependent, right? Self-regulation from within. But so that made me think, you know, we have to water these seeds of self-concept and not get these self-concept seeds watered from somebody else. You need to know what kind of man you want to be. Then you have to do the things that line up with that so you can have the life that you want. And watching porn does not fit into most people's B, so you cannot do it anymore. And if you do, you will not have the life that you want in that B. It creates a discongruency. And when you get congruent with B do have, you get it all. You get the happiness trifecta. You get dopamine, you get serotonin, you get oxytocin, you get the life that you want. And going back to the deserve part, you have to know you deserve it because most of us have been told we don't deserve it or our models of our parents are they're operating in a mode of they don't think they deserve good things in their life. So they might not have it. And when you change your model to I want it, I deserve it, you will get it. And that's what I want for you. And that comes out of those conversations with boyfriends who want to be better boyfriends husbands who are losing the wives that they love. I had a conversation with a gentleman the other day. He's like, my wife's the most amazing person and she's leaving me and because I can't get out of the screen. And I'm like, listen, friend, you gotta get into my program because the time is nigh. She's on her way out. Show her right now through your behaviors. Do what you need to do to become the person that you wanna be and show her that so the both of you can have the life that you want. And when kids are involved, you want to be the best dad. You don't want to be this, you know, fake great model for them while you're doing all of these things that are discongruent in the background. You can't be that for them if you're doing the things that don't match up. The do has to change and it has to change now. And because I want you to know every time you water those seeds and you go back to porn, you are changing your bee. You're changing the self-concept. It creates shame, it creates guilt, and it's literally wiring your brain to the thing that you're consuming. And I want that to hit you hard, hit your nervous system hard right now. Whatever it is you're watching, that's becoming your arousal template. And most of it 
does not match up to what you want to be in your life. What you're consuming, what you're putting into your brain, it's like food. If you eat junky food all the time, can you be healthy? No. If you put toxic scenes into your brain all the time, can your brain be healthy? No, it cannot. So in the second part, before we move to number three, the second part is you are using porn for mood regulation. It's not about libido. It's not about manliness. Porn's the opposite of manliness. It's escapism. It's going away from the man you want to be, not toward. I want you to go toward, not away. And it's in fact changing your brain and it's in fact changing the behaviors of your mind and body. It's changing the be for the worse. It's moving you in the wrong direction. Okay, so number three is how are you gonna be the man? So these are this is your brain hack for the day. And it goes back to, of course, self-concept and the be do have in the middle. So in your journal, write down and do a brain dump. Make it three minutes and don't stop. Don't overthink this. And you can go back to childhood because we know this is inner child work. What do you want to be? Like on your deathbed, what do you want people to say about you? Like I know for me, I want my kids to think every time they needed me in the important, difficult ways, I was able to show up for them. And it might not have been perfect. It might have been a little messy, but I always went in. I never backed away. And I'm doing that. And man, is it painful <laughs> these days. But I'm doing it because that's the B. I want to be an awesome mom who emotionally supports my kids, not just makes them food every three hours, which I'm also doing that. For my husband, I want to be a great wife that can also stay in his stuff and, and you know, stand next to him when things get difficult, support him, but not, not swoop in and take away his life experience, support all the things he wants to do. And I'm doing that. And as a friend, I, ha I have a new 2023. I want to be a better friend because it's difficult for me to continue to connect. I tend to be a solitary soul. Well, I mean, I have a million people in my life, but I've been texting people more to stay connected. I've been showing up for people more. I've been deliberately doing that. I have these categories written for myself. These are the bees that I want to be. But mostly it goes back to, I will always stay truthful. Truthful, but transparency with discernment. I will always stay in integrity. I'm always checking in, checking in with myself if I'm living the life, if I'm being the bee that I want and I'm doing the things that I need to do for it. And I've actually taken a couple things off my plate, painfully, opportunities that I wanted to follow. I had to take them off my plate this week because I'm like, you know what? I want to be in peace. Being in peace and joy are the two most important things for me. And so I've busied myself up again and I'm like, oh, this is a really cool opportunity, but it's like a one year commitment and I don't have room for it on the plate. It's got to come off. So I changed the do so I can stay consistent with the be that I want. And it's important. So, you know, I'm a work in progress. I'm always checking in on that stuff and I have to change the do to stay the be, but I have a process to keep checking in. And then what I get is I will have more peace and joy because I made that difficult decision. And I did it with open communication. I did it out of love. I did it with transparency. I, I explained it. I didn't over explain it. I didn't justify it. It's just what I need. And actually this happened yesterday. My son Seamus works at a grocery store. He's so funny. And he does not want to work on Saturdays. I respect this. But when I was young, I worked at JCPenney's. It was my first um, job. And, you know, if they call me to work, it was no problem. Even if it was at my own peril, I would show up for all the shifts. You know, I was the girl who was working around the clock. I had three jobs. That's, you know, if you've met me, that's congruent with what you know about me. So if they called, I show up. I'm sitting next to Seamus yesterday. The phone rings. It's his manager. And I can hear the manager go, you know, we need someone to work on Saturday. Or can you do that? And he goes, nope. <laughs> nothing else no was the whole sentence no no I can't and then I hear the manager go uh, uh okay then thanks and hangs up but he and then he goes no way am I working on a Saturday it just cracks me up which don't get me wrong I need to work with this kid he's got more hours but just cracks me up because he knows 
what he wants to be, do, and have. And, and it like never even entered his mind if he was working on Saturday. And I'm like, wow, that is really cool because, you know, being able to just know what he wants for his life. So, you know, having more of that so that you know and you can make these decisions. So get on paper and you can write at the top, the man. And when I say the man, what does that mean to you? Hopefully it means strength, soft strength being able to show up for the people in your life, but to do it with kindness and grace and empathy and compassion. And I know some of that might not be resonating with you, but that's important stuff to be the man that you need to be and to have fun and to laugh and to have balance and to you know, be able to enjoy every minute of this one ride that we get around this marble spinning in space. To, to create all the lemonade out of the lemons that you can by adding a little sugar. So think about what you wanna be, the very best version of yourself. What do you wanna be? The man. Now, what do you have to do to become that man? And I want you to really think hard if porn fits into the do of that equation and especially thinking about, I know when we use the word porn that might make some people uncomfortable, you know and I know that word doesn't do it justice at all. So I want you to think for yourself what you're consuming because it's impacting you. So that do, does that match up to the be that you want? And the doing of watching porn, especially knowing what you in particular are watching and that it is changing your brain, is that precluding you from having everything you want in your life? And I would bet the answer is yes. So if that's the case, most people need to get into a recovery program because leaving porn behind is not an easy thing to do. So I've shown up here to help you know all of this because I know so many people think porn is good for them and they think it's part of being the man. I hope you can see it's not. And if you cannot leave it behind, alone or just with my videos and my podcast, then please get into my 90 day program. If you don't wanna join my program, join another one that feels good to you. This isn't a sales pitch. It is the pitch for most people cannot do it by themselves. And science supports this. Science shows you need the tools, techniques, strategies, and the professional support in moving through the journey. That's what's in the 90 day program and it's self-guided and it's self-paced. So you don't have to talk to anybody if you don't want to. But of course, if you'd like to talk to me, there's a button for a consultation on my website. And when you join the program, there's meetings with me and you can also add more services for personalized support if you want it. But get into the program because it gives you unwire, rewire and hardwire the comprehensive synergistic program to be able to unwire the need to go back to porn for emotional regulation and to teach you how to emotionally regulate from within in a much healthier way. At the same time, I teach you how to create healthy sexuality in your life and to leave the shackles of unhealthy sexuality behind that are impacting you. And lastly, it's to create the life of integrity and strength and interdependence and invulnerability by being vulnerable and compassionate. It's amazing. So in that hardware section, you learn how to offset stress, how to manage it, and how to move on into the future as the man. So get into the program if it feels good. Get into any program if mine doesn't feel good and start moving forward to become the man you want and you deserve. All right. Happy Father's Day to everybody out there who is a dad. And as always, control your brain or it'll control you.